brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. John Major Sir John Major is a British politician who was Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and leader of the Conservative Party from 1990 to 1997. He served as Foreign Secretary and then Chancellor of the Exchequer in the Thatcher government from 1989 to 1990 and was a Member of Parliament for Huntingdon from 1979 to 2001. Since the death of Margaret Thatcher in 2013, he is the oldest living former Prime Minister. Born in Sutton, Surrey, Major grew up in Brixton. He initially worked as an insurance clerk, and then at the London Electricity Board, before becoming an executive at Standard Chartered. He was first elected to Parliament in 1979 as the Member of Parliament for Huntingdon. He served as a parliamentary private secretary, assistant whip and as a minister for Social Security. In 1987, Margaret Thatcher appointed him as Chief Secretary to the Treasury, and then as Foreign Secretary two years later. Just three months later, he was again moved to Chancellor of the Exchequer, where he presented the 1990 budget. Major became Prime Minister after Thatcher's reluctant resignation in November 1990. He presided over UK participation in the Gulf War in March 1991 and negotiated the Maastricht Treaty in December 1991. He went on to lead the Conservatives to a fourth consecutive electoral victory, winning the most votes in British electoral history. With over 14 million votes in the 1992 general election, albeit with a reduced majority in the House of Commons. Shortly after this, even though a staunch supporter of the exchange rate mechanism, his government became responsible for British exit from the Urm after Black Wednesday on 16 September 1992. This event led to a loss of confidence in conservative economic policies and Major was never able to achieve a lead in opinion polls again. Despite the eventual revival of economic growth amongst other successes such as the beginnings of the Northern Ireland peace process, by the mid-1990s the Conservative Party was embroiled in scandals involving various MPs, including cabinet ministers. Criticism of Major's leadership reached such a pitch that he chose to resign as party leader in June 1995, challenging his critics to either back him or challenge him. He was duly challenged by John Redwood, but was easily re-elected. By this time, the Labour Party had moved further to the right wing of the political spectrum under the leadership of Tony Blair and won a large number of by-elections eventually depriving Major's government of a parliamentary majority in February 1997. Major went on to lose the 1997 general election months later, in one of the largest electoral defeats. Since the Great Reform Act of 1832, Major was succeeded by William Hague as leader of the Conservative Party in June 1997. He went on to retire from active politics, leaving the House of Commons at the 2001 general election. In 1999, a BBC poll of 20th century British Prime Ministers ranked him 17th. Early life and education Major was born on 29 March 1943 at St. Helier Hospital and Queen Mary's Hospital for children in Sutton, Surrey, the son of Gwen Major and former Music Hall performer Tom Major Ball, who was 63 years old. When Major was born, he was christened John Roy Major, but only John Major was recorded on his birth certificate. He used his middle name until the early 1980s. He attended primary school at Cheam Common and from 1954, he attended Rutlish School, a grammar school in the London borough of Merton. 
In 1955, with his father's garden ornaments business in decline, the family moved to Brixton. The following year, Major watched his first debate in the House of Commons, where Harold Macmillan presented his only budget as Chancellor of the Exchequer, and has attributed his political ambitions to that event. He also credited a chance meeting with former Prime Minister Clement Attlee on the King's Road shortly afterwards. Major left school at the age of 16 in 1959 with three O-levels in history, English language, and English literature. He later gained three more O-levels by correspondence course in the British Constitution, Mathematics and Economics. Major's first job was as a clerk in the insurance brokerage firm Pratt & Sons in 1959. Disliking this job, he quit. Major joined the Young Conservatives in Brixton at this time. Major was almost 19 years old when his father died. At the age of 82 on 27 March 1962, his mother died eight and a half years later in September 1970, at the age of 65. After Major became Prime Minister, it was misreported that his failure to get a job as a bus conductor resulted from his failing to pass a maths test. He had in fact passed all of the necessary tests, but had been passed over owing to his height. After a period of unemployment, Major started working at the London Electricity Board in 1963 which is where incidentally his successor as Prime Minister, Tony Blair, also worked when he was young. He later decided to undertake a correspondence course in banking. Major took up a post as an executive at the Standard Chartered Bank in May 1965, and he rose quickly through the ranks. He was sent to work in Jos, Nigeria, by the bank in 1967, and he nearly died in a car accident there. Early political career Major was interested in politics from an early age. Encouraged by fellow conservative Derek Stone, he started giving speeches on a soapbox in Brixton Market. He stood as a candidate for Lambeth London Borough Council at the age of 21 in 1964, and was elected in the Conservative landslide in 1968. While on the council he was chairman of the Housing Committee, being responsible for overseeing the building of several large council housing estates. He lost his seat in 1971. Major was an active young Conservative, and according to his biographer Anthony Selden brought youthful exuberance to the Tories in Brixton, but was often in trouble with the professional agent Marion Standing. Also according to Selden, the formative political influence on Major was Jean Kieran's, a divorcee a. 13 years his elder, who became his political mentor and his lover, too. Selden writes, she made Major smart in his appearance, groomed him politically, and made him more ambitious and worldly. Their relationship lasted from 1963 to some time after 1968. Major stood for election to Parliament in St Pancras North in both United Kingdom general elections in 1974, but was unsuccessful each time. In November 1976, Major was selected to be the candidate for the safe Conservative seat of Huntingdonshire. He won the seat in the 1979 general election. Following boundary changes, Major became the MP for the newly formed seat of Huntingdon in 1983, and retained the seat in 1987, 1992 and 1997. He retired from Parliament in 2001. He was appointed as a Parliamentary Private Secretary in 1981, becoming an Assistant Whip in 1983. He was later made Under Secretary of State for Social Security in 1985, before being promoted to become Minister of State in the same department in 1986. 
first attracting national media attention over cold weather payments to the elderly in January 1987, when Britain was in the depths of a severe winter. In Cabinet Following the 1987 election, Major was promoted to the Cabinet as Chief Secretary to the Treasury. Two years later, in a surprise July 1989 reshuffle, Major succeeded Geoffrey Howe as Foreign Secretary. The rapid promotion surprised many, due to Major's relative lack of experience in the Cabinet. Just three months later, in October 1989, Major was appointed Chancellor of the Exchequer after the sudden resignation of Nigel Lawson. This meant that, despite only being in the Cabinet for little over two years, Major had gone from the most junior position in the Cabinet to holding two of the great offices of state. As Chancellor, Major presented only one budget, the first to be televised live, in early 1990. He publicized it as a budget for savings and announced the tax-exempt special savings account, arguing that measures were required to address the marked fall in the household savings ratio that had been apparent during the previous financial year. In June 1990, Major suggested that the proposed single European currency should be a hard AQ, competing against existing national currencies. The idea was not in the end adopted. In October 1990, Major and Douglas Heard, Major's successor as Foreign Secretary, persuaded Thatcher to support British entry to the European exchange rate mechanism, a move which she had resisted for many years, and which had played a part in the resignation of Nigel Lawson. After Michael Heseltine challenged Thatcher for the leadership of the Conservative Party in November 1990, Major and Douglas Heard were the proposer and seconder on her nomination papers for the leadership ballot. After Thatcher was unable to win enough support to prevent a second ballot, she announced her resignation as Prime Minister and Conservative leader. Major subsequently announced on the 22nd of November that he would stand in the second ballot. Major had been at home in Huntingdon recovering from a wisdom tooth operation. During the first leadership ballot, Thatcher's nomination papers for the second ballot were sent to him by car for him to sign. It later emerged that he had signed both Thatcher's papers and a set of papers for his own candidacy in case she withdrew. Unlike in the first ballot, a candidate only required a simple majority of Conservative MPs to win. In this case 187 of 375 MPs the ballot was held on the afternoon of 27 November. Although Major fell two votes short of the required winning total, he polled far enough ahead of both Douglas Heard and Michael Heseltine to secure immediate concessions from them. With no remaining challengers, Major was formally named leader of the Conservative Party that evening and was duly appointed Prime Minister the following day. 1992 election The UK economy entered a recession during 1990, which deepened in 1991. With unemployment rising rapidly, the Conservatives had been consistently behind Labour in the opinion polls since 1989, and the gap had widened significantly during 1990. Within two months of Major becoming Prime Minister, Major was required to lead Britain through the First Gulf War, playing a key role in persuading U.S. President George H.W. Bush to support no-fly zones. During this period, Major and his cabinet survived an IRA assassination attempt by mortar attack. The Conservatives managed to regain a lead in the opinion polls after this period with polls also showing Major as the most popular Prime Minister since Harold Macmillan in the early 1960s. In spite of Labour leader Neil Kinnock's repeated calls 
for an immediate general election after Major became Prime Minister. It wasn't until February 1992 that Major called an election for the 9th of April. Major took his campaign onto the streets, delivering many addresses from an upturned soapbox as he had done in his days on Lambeth Council. This approach stood in contrast to the Labour Party's seemingly slicker campaign and it chimed with the electorate, along with hard-hitting negative campaign advertising focusing on the issue of Labour's approach to taxation. During the campaign, both parties were either tied or within one point of each other in opinion polls, leading to uncertainty over who would win or whether there would be an outright election winner at all. On the night of the election, exit polls indicated a very slim Labour lead, which most observers predicted would translate into either a hung parliament or a small Labour majority, with Major's best hope of retaining power being with the Tories remaining in government as a minority government or as part of a coalition. Despite these predictions, the Conservatives won the election, gaining in excess of 14 million votes, the highest popular vote ever recorded by a British political party in a general election to date. Although this translated into a much reduced majority of 21 seats in the House of Commons, this was enough for Major to return as Prime Minister elected in his own right and give the Conservatives their fourth consecutive victory. Although the relatively small majority would go on to cause problems for Major throughout his second term. Black Wednesday Major's second honeymoon as Prime Minister following his election victory did not last long. On 16 September 1992, the UK was forced to exit the exchange rate mechanism in difficult circumstances, in a day which would come to be known as Black Wednesday, with billions of pounds wasted in a futile attempt to defend the value of sterling. The upheaval caused by the day's events was such that Major came close to resigning as Prime Minister, preparing an unsent letter of resignation addressed to the Queen. Although Major continued to defend Britain's membership of the ERM, stating that the ERM was the medicine to cure the ailment, but it was not the ailment. The disaster of Black Wednesday left the government's economic credibility irreparably damaged. Major kept his economic team unchanged for seven months after Black Wednesday before eventually sacking Norman Lamont as Chancellor of the Exchequer, replacing him with Kenneth Clark. This came after months of press criticism of Lamont and a heavy defeat at a by-election in Newbury. His delay in sacking Lamont was exploited by Major's critics both inside and outside of his party, who used it to claim Major was too indecisive. Immediately after Black Wednesday, the Conservatives fell far behind Labour in the opinion polls and Major would never be able to regain the lead for the rest of his time as Prime Minister. Being trounced in local council elections and the European Parliament elections on the way, as well as suffering a string of by-election defeats which gradually wiped out the Conservative majority. Less than a year of his triumphant election victory, Public opinion on Major personally plummeted, with Black Wednesday, mine closures, the Maastricht dispute and high unemployment being cited as four key areas of dissatisfaction with the Prime Minister. Newspapers which traditionally supported the Conservatives and had championed Major at the election were now being severely critical of him on an almost daily basis. The UK's forced withdrawal from the ERM was succeeded by a partial economic recovery, with a new policy of flexible exchange rates, allowing lower interest rates in devaluation, thereby increasing demand for UK goods in export markets. The recession that had started shortly before Major became Prime Minister was declared 
over in April 1993, when the economy grew by 0.2 percent. Unemployment also started to fall. It had stood at nearly 3 million by the end of 1992, but the spring of 1997 it had fallen to 1.7 million. Europe On becoming Prime Minister, Major had promised to keep Britain at the very heart of Europe and claimed to have won game, set and match for Britain by negotiating the social chapter and single currency opt-outs from the Maastricht Treaty, and by ensuring that there was no overt mention of a federal Europe and that foreign and defense policy were kept as matters of intergovernmental cooperation in separate pillars from the supranational European Union. By 2010 some of these concessions, although not Britain's non-membership of the single currency, had been overtaken by subsequent events. Even these moves towards greater European integration met with vehement opposition from the Eurosceptic wing of Major's party and his cabinet. As the government attempted to ratify the Maastricht Treaty in the first half of 1993, although Labour supported the treaty, they tactically opposed certain provisions of the treaty to exploit divisions in the government. This opposition included passing an amendment that required a vote on the social chapter aspects of the treaty before it could be ratified. On the 22nd of July 1993, several Conservative MPs, known as the Maastricht Rebels, voted against the treaty, and the government was defeated. Major called another vote on the following day, which he declared as a vote of confidence. He won the vote, but the damage had been done to his authority in Parliament. Later that day, Major gave an interview to ITN's Michael Brunson. During an unguarded moment, when Major thought that the microphones had been switched off, Brunson asked why he did not sack the ministers who were conspiring against him. He replied, just think it through from my perspective. You are the Prime Minister with a majority of 18. Where do you think most of the poison is coming from? From the dispossessed, and the never-possessed. Do we want three more of the bastards out there? What's Lyndon B. Johnson's maxim, Major later said that he had picked the number three from the air, and that he was referring to former ministers who had left the government and begun to create havoc with their anti-European activities. But many journalists suggested that the three were Peter Lilly, Michael Portillo, and Michael Howard, three of the more prominent Eurosceptics within his cabinet. Throughout the rest of Major's time as Prime Minister the exact identity of the three was blurred, with John Redwood's name frequently appearing in a list along with two of the others. The tape of this conversation was leaked to the Daily Mirror and widely reported embarrassing major. By April 1993, a mere 12 months after his general election triumph, John Major's popularity as Prime Minister had slumped, as well as his party's dismal showings in the opinion polls. Major's own personal ratings in opinion polls were similarly low. He was now being reviled on an almost daily basis by newspapers whose support the Conservatives had once appeared to have taken for granted. Critics from all corners were also criticizing his consensus's approach to politics, which contrasted sharply to the confrontational approach of Margaret Thatcher, while others were keen to point out that Major's conciliatory approach to the job was something that many observers had been hoping for. When Thatcher left office in 1990, comparisons were being drawn up with an earlier Conservative Prime Minister, Anthony Eden, who had risen through the ranks as a highly respected government minister before becoming Prime Minister, only to be seen as a disappointment after he did take over. Arguments continued over Europe. Early in 1994 Major vetoed the Belgian politician Jean-Luc de Harain 
to succeed Jacques Delors as president of the European Commission for being excessively federalist, only to find that he had to accept a Luxembourg politician of similar views, Jacques Santa, instead. Around this time Major, who in an unfortunate phrase denounced the Labour leader John Smith as Monsieur Wee, the poodle of Brussels, tried to demand an increase in the qualified majority needed for voting in the newly enlarged European Union. After Major had to back down on this issue Tony Marlowe called openly in the House of Commons for his resignation. In 1996 European governments banned British beef over claims that it was infected with mad cow disease. The British government withheld cooperation with the EU over the issue, but did not succeed in getting the ban lifted, only a timetable of lifting it. The conflict has been named the Beef War. By April 2013, VCJD, the human form of the disease, had killed 280 people. For the rest of Major's premiership, the main argument was over whether Britain would join the planned European single currency. Some leading conservatives, including Chancellor Ken Clark, favoured joining and insisted that Britain retain a completely free choice whilst increasing numbers of others expressed their reluctance to join. By this time billionaire Sir James Goldsmith had set up his own referendum party, siphoning off some conservative support, and, at the 1997 general election many conservative candidates were openly expressing reluctance to join. Bosnia Major's premiership saw the ongoing war in Bosnia. Government policy was to maintain the United Nations arms embargo which restricted the flow of weapons into the region, and to oppose air strikes against Bosnian Serbs. The government's reasoning was that an arms embargo would only create a level killing field, and that air strikes would endanger UN peacekeepers and the humanitarian aid effort. This policy was criticized by Thatcher and others who saw the Bosnian Muslims as the main victims of Serb aggression and compared the situation to events in the Second World War. The Clinton administration, by contrast, was committed to a policy of lift and strike, causing tensions in the special relationship. Some commentators compared the major government's policy to a moral equivalency because it appeared to judge the Bosnian government and the Bosnian Serbs equally culpable. To some extent, these critics of Major's policy were later vindicated when, in an article published in 2011, the then Defense Secretary Malcolm Rifkind accepted that the arms embargo was a serious mistake by the UN. Northern Ireland Major open talks with the Provisional Irish Republican Army upon taking office. When he declared to the House of Commons in November 1993 that, to sit down and talk with Mr. Adams and the Provisional IRA, would turn my stomach. Shin Effie Akutayan gave the media an outline of the secret talks indeed held regularly since that February. The Downing Street Declaration was issued on 15 December 1993 by Major and Albert Reynolds. The Irish Taoiseach, with whom he had a friendly relationship, an IRA ceasefire followed in 1994. In the House of Commons, Major refused to sign up to the first draft of the Mitchell Principles, which resulted in the ending of the ceasefire. Major paved the way for the Good Friday Agreement also known as the Belfast Agreement, which was signed after he left office. In March 1995, Major refused to answer the phone calls of United States President Bill Clinton for several days. Because of his anger at Clinton's decision to invite Jerry Adams to the White House for St. Patrick's Day. Rail 
From 1994 to 1997, major privatised British Rail, splitting it up into franchises to be run by the private sector. The process was controversial at the time, and its success is hotly debated, with a large increase in passenger numbers and investment in the network balanced by worries about the level of rail subsidy. Sleaze at the 1993 Conservative Party conference, Major began the Back to Basics campaign, which he intended to also be about a wide variety of issues including the economy, education, and policing, but which was interpreted by many purely in the context of returning to the moral and family values that they associated with the Conservative Party instead of being well received back to basics, instead became synonymous with scandal. Often exposed in lurid and embarrassing detail by tabloid newspapers such as The Sun. In 1992, David Meller, a cabinet minister, had been exposed as having an extramarital affair and for accepting hospitality from the daughter of a leading member of the Palestine Liberation Organization. The wife of Lord Caithness committed suicide amongst rumours of the peer committing adultery. Stephen Milligan was found dead having apparently auto-asphyxiated whilst performing a solitary sex act. David Ashby was outed by his wife after sleeping with men. A string of other Conservative MPs, including Alan Amos, Tim Yeo, and Michael Brown, were involved in sexual scandals. Other debilitating scandals included arms to Iraq, the ongoing inquiry into how government ministers including Alan Clark had encouraged businesses to supply arms to Iraq during the Iran-Iraq War of the 1980s, in breach of the official arms embargo, and how senior ministers had, on legal advice, attempted to withhold evidence of this official connivance when directors of Matrix Churchill were put on trial for breaking the embargo. Another scandal was, Cash for Questions, in which first Graham Riddick and David Trudinick accepted money to ask questions in the House of Commons in a newspaper, Sting, and later Tim Smith and Neil Hamilton were found to have received money from Mohammed Al-Fayed, also to ask questions in the House. Later, David Willits resigned as Paymaster General after he was accused of rigging evidence to do with cash for questions. Defense Minister Jonathan Aitken was accused by the ITV investigative journalism series World in Action and The Guardian newspaper of secretly doing deals with leading Saudi princes. He denied all accusations and promised to wield the sword of truth in libel proceedings which he brought against The Guardian and the producers of World in Action Granada Television. At an early stage in the trial, it became apparent that he had lied under oath and he was subsequently convicted of perjury and sentenced to a term of imprisonment. Major attempted to draw some of the sting from the financial scandals by setting up public inquiries, the Nolan Report into standards expected in public life, and the Scott Report into the arms to Iraq scandal. Although Tim Smith stepped down from the House of Commons at the 1997 general election, both Neil Hamilton and Jonathan Aiken sought re-election for their seats, and were both defeated in Hamilton's case by the former BBC reporter Martin Bell, who stood as an anti-sleaze candidate, both the Labour and Liberal Democrat candidates withdrawing in his favour, amidst further publicity unfavourable to the Conservatives. Major later commented in his memoirs on the routine with which he would be telephoned over the weekend to be warned of the latest embarrassing story due to break. He wrote that he took a stern line against financial impropriety, but was angered at the way in which a host of scandals, many of them petty sexual misdemeanors, 
by a small number of MPs, were exploited by the press and opposition for political advantage. He also conceded that the issue fed the public belief that the Conservative had been in government too long, and had got into bad habits and quoted Labour's claim in 1997, nothing better encapsulates what people think of this government. Sleaze will be one of the things which brings this government down. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.